Many of you have asked me why I have Arkansas going 10-2 and two this year. What's the schedule breakdown? In what world do you think that this team could actually win double-digit games in the regular season? Well, on this beautiful Wednesday, I'm going to stake my claim, and I'm going to back it up. I'm going to be able to give you some evidence of why Arkansas can go 10-2 and two this year and why I believe they will. This is the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 137thebuzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday as uh, we are just 10 days, 10 days, 10. 10 days away from Razorback football starting up against Cincinnati. And I uh, I was actually, for, for those that are probably going to be asking about it, I was going to have Josh Pate on uh, the podcast today, and we tried to record it, and, and, and the audio was just, it was not working. So uh, I'll try to get him back on, and it was just uh, something that we couldn't technologically figure out, but that's okay. Uh, we'll have him on uh, again at some point, which was really disappointing. But we did, when we were recording, though, we did get to at least a little bit, so maybe I'll try to, uh, figure out some of that and punch it in there as well. So, uh, but we'll make that happen at some point in time. But the the actually the main reason I wanted Josh on, and this is why it kind of flows into what I'm talking about and why I'm kind of open the show in the way of Arkansas going ten and two, is because Josh is also one of those individuals that thinks Arkansas is going to go ten and two. And so, I'm not the only one with that take, and I'm not even going to call it a wild take. It's only a wild take when. I have them going 10 and 2, and everybody else have them going 6 and 6 or 7 and 5. But when there's a lot of people out there that have them going 9 and 3, 10 and 2, it's not such a wild take. And the one thing that I feel like I've probably been asked about or mocked or criticized for is how in God's green earth can I sit here with a straight face and say that Arkansas can go 10 and 2 this season in 2022, the year of our Lord? How can they go 10 and 2 with this schedule, with this team, with all of that? And so I want to justify my claim. I want to be able to provide you some sort of reasoning behind why I believe that. Instead of just wildly throwing something against the wall, seeing if it sticks, let me tell you why. Because I believe, first off, that this Razorback football team is really good. I think that that's where it has to start. You have to have a good team. And I think Arkansas does have a really good team. I believe that they are going to be improved in pretty much every position from what they were last season. You either have the same guys coming back that have a year of development to get better, or you have a lot of guys that have been added in via the transfer portals we've talked about. That's going to be better than what Arkansas had last year. And so I believe with that combination, putting it together, it only makes sense that you'll be able to be a really good, much improved team from last season. Of course, K.J. Jefferson coming back is the X factor of all that. Anytime that you can have a really good quarterback is always helpful. But a really good quarterback with a ton of experience that has gone through not only a full season as a starter, but a spring practice as a starter, a fall workout as a starter, and or excuse me, summer workout as a starter, and then fall camp as a starter to where there are the starter, the fact that they know their role and they know how you know what they need to do and what's expected of them and all those things is only going to be helpful, especially with somebody like Kendall Bryles, who has a history of being able to have really good quarterbacks putting in positions to where, hey, there's some quarterbacks that are better than others, but the one thing that you can guarantee is not going to happen is Arkansas is not going to have great quarterback play. Not in this offense, not the way that it runs. So those types of things, as well as the transfers and everybody, the team itself, I think, will be a better team, a more talented team than what you had last year. Yes, you don't have the Traylon Burks, but you do have a lot of other guys. You have two. I mean, let's be honest. You have two former five stars on this team. Like you have Jaden Hazelwood and you have Drew Sanders, two dudes who are bona fide five star players on this team. When was the last time you could say that Arkansas had two five stars on their team? Like, think about that. I know that it's it's a it's a much bigger uh, sport and has a lot more players than just two, but the, I don't think you've ever had two five-stars on your team. Now, you've had guys, you've had one five-star, 
you know, you've had a you had a Ryan Mallett, you've had a Darren McFadden, you had a Darius Winston. I always forget he was a five star, but you haven't had about that often. But to have two of them on your team, that alone is worth showing off. That hey, you got you got some talent there as well. But as good as the team may be, the one thing that people have brought up is like, okay, well, could this team be just as good as what they were last year, but also have a worse record because of the schedule in front of them? And some people approach it that way. Some people look at it that way. Personally, I don't. I don't look at it that way. I look at it in the regard of Arkansas having a better team with an easier schedule. This year's schedule is going to be easier. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it is going to be easier than what it was last season. I mean, think about it. Last year, yeah, okay, the non-conference is tougher this year. There's no question. But there's no doubt that the SEC schedule is much easier this season than what it was last year. Because last year, your toughest SEC games, the teams against the be- the games against the best teams in the SEC that you played, were all on the road. And not to mention the fact that two of your SEC games that were on the road were against the two teams that played the national championship and the two teams that played in the SEC championship in Alabama and Georgia. You had to go on the road in those games. Ole Miss, you were this close to beating them, but they were the third best team in the SEC last year. And you had to go on the road there. And then you add into the mix of a, I think an Auburn team. I don't even really know what to say about them last year, but you know, going into this season, we'll see how it goes. But between them, I think A&M, the A&M is a team that beat Bama, but you beat them. So there was obviously some talent there. There was, there was some, some good play there. Like the overall SEC schedule last year was far and away tougher last season than what it's going to be this year. Because besides Alabama, there's not a team on this schedule in the SEC, mind you, that I look at and I'm like, no way that Arkansas wins that game. There ain't no way. Like, I don't see that. Bama's going to be the one that I'm probably, and I think everybody's going to pick Arkansas to lose. But even then, you have them at home. Like, you have LSU at home. You have Ole Miss at home. You have South Carolina, which is kind of your wild card team because you don't really know what to expect out of them with Spencer Rattler, but you, and it's early in the season, but you have them at home. So your toughest and most difficult games in the SEC are all at home. The A&M games in Arlington, which honestly, I know people feel a certain way about this game, but to me, I actually believe that playing in Arlington is better for Arkansas because anytime that they've not played in Arlington, Arkansas has usually gotten beaten a lot worse than what they do in Arlington. Because even in t- years that Arkansas was trash and A&M was good, Arkansas still held their own. And like Chad Moore's almost beat him in Arlington. I mean, that should tell you all you need to know. So there's something about Arlington and in that game where AM does not play very well. Arkansas does play fairly well, even if AM's better than them. And so you just never really know what to expect out of that. And I feel like Arkansas is in a great chance, in a great position to win that game too. So that you call that Fayetteville South, kind of a home game. And then your three road games are against Mississippi State, Auburn, and M- Missouri, which Auburn could be really terrible by that point in time. They may have fired their coach by that point in time, or they could be good. Don't really know. They're also a wild card. I think Mississippi State is probably going to be your toughest SEC road game without a doubt. Like, I think that that's the case. And then you also have uh, Missouri, which I think you'll beat them because I don't think they're going to be a very good team this year anyways. So your SEC schedule is tough, but easier than what it was last season. The non-conference slate is tougher. Because you're not, you know, you last year you had UAPB, which you smoked. You know, it was, a, it was an easy win. You had a Rice and Georgia Southern, which you were better teams than for sure, and you won. And even Texas, uh, they ended up being decent, I guess, but they still weren't that great. But this year you got Cincinnati, who's a top 25 team, BYU on the road, top 25 team. And then you have Missouri State and Liberty, uh, even though that they have coaches that have a lot of SEC experience, and Bobby Petrino and Hugh Freeze, respectively. I still think you'll win those games. And it won't even be uh, an issue there, too. So I but here's my thing. I think Cincinnati has like they'll be good, but there's a chance that they may not be a top 25 team like they are now. But I don't think they'll finish in the top 25. Like there's a good chance of that. Luke Fickle's a good coach. Don't get me wrong. But there's they've lost so much from last season, too. You, you don't really know what to expect out of them. And BYU, you catch them like you're catching Arkansas at a bad time, too, because of the middle of the schedule and them coming off of all those games. But also BYU, they're, they're having to play Notre Dame the week before. like, and, and I think they play Utah before that. So you're talking about back-to-back games that they're going to have against 
possible top 10, top 15 foes. And then you have you like they could be beaten up at that point in time. So, again, I'm just going off of what what the scenarios are. And, you know, you could be a team that's beaten up there as well. And so that but that's where I have 10 and two coming into play because you're not going to beat Alabama. There's your one loss. That that one's the one I think everybody's going to be on the same boat where, hey, you're not beating Alabama. Uh, it's just it's it's until you do. Until you actually beat them, no one's going to pick you to beat Alabama. So that's a thing. But the other side of it is I could see Arkansas, the other game, it's like there's not one team I look at and say, oh, Arkansas is going to lose this game. It's like I could see them losing to BYU on the road. I could see them losing to Mississippi State on the road. I could see them losing to Auburn on the road, even though that one's the lesser than because you coming off of a bye week heading into that game, I like your chances a lot better in that one. Um, but still like there could be one more loss that you can't just point to and say, it's for sure. This one kind of like last season where the only game that you lost that you felt like you were a better team than was Auburn at home. And, you know, you play that game a bunch of other times, maybe you win that game, but still there was just, you know, things happen. So you, you just never know what to expect. Things happen in those games. So that's where I come from. Like, that's what I look at. And that's where. I believe they'll go 10 and two and 10 and two to me. I, I just, you know, Arkansas went 10 and two in 2010. They went 10 and two in 2011. Great years. If Arkansas goes 10 and two this season, this season, and we'll even go a step further and say that their losses are to Bama and to BYU. That means you go seven and one in SEC play. You haven't you've only gone seven and one in SEC play one time, and that was in 06, where you should have gone eight and no, but it's either here nor there. So there you're talking about all you're trying to make history. And if you went 10 and 2 and 7 and 1 in conference play, I would make the argument that that season would probably be a top three season in Razorback history. Now, I don't that you won't win the SEC because Alabama will win it. You'll finish second in the SEC West you'll almost positively go to the Sugar Bowl. I think that everybody could go ahead and bank on that. All those things together would definitely work out. But at the end of the day, you still have to take care of your business. You still got to do what you need to do. You still got to be a better team. Like you got to do all those things. But 10 and 2 is a scenario that could happen. But as we know in college football, the SEC, you never know what to expect. You never know what to see. You never know who's going to be good, who's going to be bad in the preseason. Like, there's even teams in Arkansas schedule right now where I mentioned Auburn. Like, LSU is another one. I don't think they're going to be great. I don't think they're going to be good. But they could. <laughs> you know, there's always that team. Like, last year, I didn't think Ole Miss was going to be as good as what they were. But they were. They were. I think people say that about, like, Kentucky and stuff. And people probably said that about Arkansas last year. They're probably like, hey, this team was actually pretty good, even though they were picked to finish, I think they either sixth or seventh in the West last season. But. Things change. Things go away. But the point is this, and, and this is, I'll end on this note. If Arkansas is able to put everything together that we all think that they're capable of, if they're able to have a healthy team, which is key, and they're able to have the players from last year have developed over, this, over the offseason and be better this season than what they were last year, and that we're banking on these transfers that have come in to be better than what the players that they're replacing from my season are, Sands, Traylon Burks. Let's just not put him in the mix. But all those other players being better, being contributors uh, to, to a better, more depth quality depth team than what you had last season. And maybe there'll be some guys that you don't really know about on the team just yet that could step up into roles, whether it's a defensive lineman, whether it's uh, another wide receiver, whether it's a tight end, you know, whoever, somebody that kind of comes out of nowhere and starts playing really well. Like if all those things work, which all those things are perfectly and totally logical that it could happen that way, you do all those things together, 10 and 2 is a reality. You're good enough to go 10 and 2. You have a 10 win team right now, talent wise, depth wise, all of that right now. But as we know in football and in college football and in the SEC, especially, 
you can't ever guarantee anything as far as wins on who's going to do what. There's no guarantees. But the thing about Arkansas and the thing about Sam Pittman and this team this year, though, is that whatever they're doing and however they're doing it is building it in a way that's strong. It's got a very sustainable foundation. It's not something where they went all in last season and that's it. Like, there's a reason why experts believe that Arkansas will be just as good, if not better, this year. There are reasons why people are picking them to finish second in the West, have 10 wins. There's a reason why it's not because they want to have hot takes. It's not because they just want to get everybody's attention and have a bunch of clickbait or whatever you want to call it. It's not because of that. It's because they know football. They know what good teams look like. They know what good coaches look like. They know what good programs look like. And they see what Arkansas has, and they see what Arkansas is doing with Sam Pittman and all these coaches and all these players. And what they see is they see a program and a team that's destined to take that next step and to get to that 10-win season. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It could happen. I ain't going to get crazy with y'all and start arguing with y'all in the comments, but it could happen. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. And as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home. It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway, right? I mean, even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You lose your car. You kill somebody. Listen, everybody knows the risk of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the uh, Locked On Razorbacks podcast, and I know that uh, we got to hear from some players just yesterday, like Matt Landers and uh, a guy that we haven't heard from uh, too much, but also uh, a Miles Slusher, which I thought uh, was really interesting to hear from him. Uh, one of the things that just like stands out to me, honestly, is just, you know, when you hear from these players, first off, they're all very professional. And, they, you know, they, they're very, like, they're very bought in. Like, they're very football-minded. And I know that that's kind of cliche to say, but I can just tell you from, it's not like I've been covering the Razorbacks for a long time, but there was, it was always amazing to me to hear from some players where in press conferences or whatnot, when I would hear them, and I'm like, you know, I don't know about you. I don't know how much, uh, how dedicated you are to this cause right here or how uh, all in you are on this football team. Like there was times where I would see that and sense that. And that was one of the things, honestly, where I was wondering about with Sam Pittman when he first came into Arkansas was would there be a lot of players like that? Would there be players that they he would have to weed out because they're problems, because they're not all in, because of what, whatever issue they may have? And because I feel like there's times where, especially when you're a program that goes two and 10 and back to back seasons, that there's probably issues with that. And guys that may not be all in that you have to make moves on. You have to say, okay, well, this guy's hurting our team. He's hurting the culture, whatever it is. You got to move on. But the more I thought about it, and just over the past three years, you really haven't had any of those types of players, at least not where it was completely and totally evident that they had those issues. Like, I feel like that's such a rarity. And I don't know if that's more of a Sam Pittman thing, or maybe it's more of just like the players that were already on campus and they were all like all in on whatever they, they just wanted to win. They just want to play football. And maybe that was the case of why, uh, you know, they just stuck it out and wanted to make it all work. Like maybe that was the case too, but it, it just seems like it was a pretty rare thing. Something you don't see very often. And that's why all these players that have stuck it out and are entering into their, you know, third year under Sam Pittman that may have been here before with Chad Morris. Like, you know, KJ Jefferson's one of those guys. Uh, I think about, of course, um, Jalen Catalan also being one of those guys, Trey Knox being one of those guys, you know, these players that were brought in 
under Chad Morris, go through a coaching change and have stuck it out and have really excelled. It's impressive to me. Like, it's really cool because I, I, again, I just don't think it's that common in college football these days where you have coaching changes of terrible play and terrible games and terrible teams and they all stick it out. They all stay and they all feel good about it. Like, I just feel that's a rarity thing, but that's every time I hear these players talk and, and I'm talking more about the guys that have been here for a while, uh, bumper pulls another one. You can just tell, you can just tell that they are, they believe in what they're doing. And I compare it to like with, with the Petrino players where you look at, and when you actually did get to hear from him, they get to hear from him as often as what we do now. But when you did hear from him, they knew, man, they just knew they are like, Hey, as long as we do what we're supposed to do, as long as we're doing what we're coached to do, we're going to win big. We're going to have some big time wins. We're going to be a great team. They had that confidence that that the way that they spoke, the way that they talked about what they're doing, how they're doing it, and all those things. They, you know, they weren't the, doing the things where they looked down and kind of were searching for answers. Like they would actually straight up say, Hey, this is this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. Um, so that's something I feel like has been really impressive to me in hearing from these players. Now it's got to translate onto the field, obviously. They ought to be, be able to put that uh into that next step, obviously. Like that's the you can't just sit here and say one thing and then go out and do another and expect people to believe that you're confident in what you're doing. Like that's just not going to happen. But uh, I really like hearing from players. I really like uh, the fact that we actually do get to hear from players because other places don't have that, but there's a cool little confidence to them. And I think that Sam Pittman, when he brings in players uh, into his program too, he's not just bringing them in because they're talented. I think he's bringing them in too because he's like, "Hey, if you're going to come here, you got to be, you got to know about this. You got to be a part of this. You got to do this. Like this is just something you got to, you got to go along with." And I think that they're doing that really well. So just all those things in together. Like if you haven't had a chance to listen to these kids in the press conferences, do it because it's really good. It's really interesting, uh, and it's always cool to hear from them personally. So, but we'll wrap up shop here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast coming up next. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, You know, again, I like to always do some fun things at the end of the uh, podcast and some things uh, I want to bring up. But uh, yesterday, it it was kind of fun where I was like, I was sitting at home and I get to the point to where I, I kind of like when you do podcasting and radio show and all that stuff, sometimes you want to decompress like you sometimes, you know, this is this is a crazy uh, admission. I'm sure some people will probably look at me funny for. I actually don't always want to watch sports when I get home. <laughs> like I will watch Razorback stuff like all the time. I'll watch football, basketball, base. I'll watch it all. But like on a Tuesday night, I'm not going to come home and turn on baseball games and the major league baseball games and just sit there and watch the game. Like I just, I just don't do that or the NBA or even the NFL preseason. Like I just do not care, do not care. And some people like, how in the world do you host a sports show and you do all that? I was like, well, I host a Razorback thing. So it's more Razorback driven because my, my idea has always been, I'm never going to talk about the NFL or the NBA as good as what national people will. So I'm not going to try that. But national people will never talk about Arkansas, which is what all of you want to hear about. So I'll go all in on Arkansas and be that guy because if you want to listen about the NFL and NBA, you ain't going to listen to my show no matter what. <laughs> like you're going to listen to national shows. But anyways, I was I was coming home and I always I'm trying to like watch it's like get ready for movies or watch some movies and stuff from uh from previous uh, years and stuff, the ones that I haven't seen before. And I and I watched the movie Heat last night. And I know people are probably like laughing at me because I've never watched Heat, but no, I haven't. And um, I'm, I consider myself a pretty big movie buff. I love movies, movies from all years, all generations, some of the greatest ones. And Heat was great. Like, I love that movie. It was incredible. And I just wanted to kick myself for going as long as I have without watching it. But, um, you know, it's just so funny to me. Like, what is it about heist movies that interest us? Like, it was a great heist movie, teamwork, you know, and uh, the whether it's that or like Ocean's Eleven with the heist and everything. And I started thinking about this. And again, this is just my random thoughts. You probably don't even care about it. But I'm like, you know what? We need to get back to making great movies again. Like, just great ideas and great movies that just don't have some sort of like social message in every single turn. 
Like, you know what? Sometimes I just want to like, like Top Gun Maverick. I still haven't seen it yet, but I heard like great things about it. And I hear that's like, yeah, hey, it's just a good, great movie. I was like, yeah, why can't we get back to that? Why can't we get back to just watching movies because they're great and artistic and, and they take risks, you know, but like just the same drivel and reboots and stuff is just like, oh, I don't know. And I just like I was like thinking back to all the 90s and like how great, like how many great movies were made in the 90s alone? Like I, I look back at like the past 10 years. Like there's maybe, maybe one movie per year that's good, maybe. But like there were times back then where there were like three or four movies in one year that were incredible. I just wish we could get back to that. I love movies. And it just made me sad because I miss those movies. And I miss having that 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 type of thing where going to the movie theater and watching a movie was uh, awesome and inspiring and great and entertaining and it, it tugged at your emotions. And I just feel like it's gone. It just does it's not doesn't exist anymore. I don't know. That's just my thought and opinion on the matter. But either way, appreciate everybody listening in the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. We can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. And we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see.